This is Special Chronicles, giving respect and a voice to people with special needs. I shudder thinking how the world can be so cruel. I lend my voice to those who can. It's time we try. It's time we care. It's time we stand. It starts with a voice. Welcome to the Special Quanticos Podcast. Special Quanticos presents Inclusive Health Series, Season 2, Part 2. This is Daniel Spukowski, founder of Special Quanticos and a health messenger with Special Olympics. This week, our topic is healthy athletes as we break down the eight disciplines, MedFest, Lions Club, Opening Eyes, Healthy Healing, Special Smiles, uh, health promotion, prevention, and nutrition, strong minds, physical therapy, fun fitness, and fit feet, and talk about how this benefits all of us uh, athletes. Plus, we sit down with a healthy healing clinical director recorded live from the 2024 Summer Games. And joining me back this week is Taylor. Um, please put your hands together as we welcome Taylor back. Hey, Daniel. Awesome. And uh, it's good to have you back. And um, this week, um, I'm sure some listener, some listeners and some in all special Olympics community might know about healthy athletes, but I'm sure that there's a lot that um, are new to uh, to um, healthy athletes. And so let, let's uh, um, break down what the eight disciplines are. Yeah, happy to. Um, so Healthy Athletes is one of the programs that our health initiatives we offer um, and special Olympics offer through, throughout the world, um, just like Illinois. We, what it is really is our free medical screening, the education that we offer to all of our athletes so they can feel and feel the best on and off the playing field. Um, and yes, there are eight whole disciplines. Currently, Illinois offers five. Um, last year, between the five disciplines, we screened over 2,000 of our athletes, um, and I'm going to do a deeper, deeper dive into each of these disciplines that we offer and uh, on top of the three that we don't currently offer. Um, we do our best to coordinate our healthy athlete events with local volunteer health professionals and student partners, um, and these health screenings are often held with state events or often stand alone. It just really depends on how what, what the date lands on. Um, so one of the eight disciplines that we do offer is the MedFest, which is a physical exam. All of our athletes are required to have physical exams on file um, in order to participate in our sports. So we offer MedFest to help our athletes get involved in our sports by doing offering this. Um, what MedFest is, is, is Essentially, they all, we do physical exams. So we have doctors, nurse practitioners, medical students come out and do a variety of uh, evaluation on their medical history, do an evaluation on the height and weight, blood sugar pressure reading, and also do a couple of tests that are involved in what you, in a typical physical exam, heart, abdominal health, and mobility. And then they have a checkout station, which kind of just a quick review of the findings of their physical exam, if the doctor determines that they're healthy to play or if they should do a follow-up care with their current doctor. So that's a little bit about MedFest. We do host these throughout the state, um, throughout every year. Um, and then, of course, we have Opening Eyes, which is our most, uh, which is what we offer at Summer Games in, um, in Chicago. Um, and I know, Dan, you have quite some experience with this. I know you're wearing your new glasses um, today from our Summer Games. Um, so what our opening eyes is, it's not a comprehensive exam, but we do the daily do non-dilated vision screenings, refraction tests. Uh, refraction tests are what measures a per person's prescription to determine if they need eyeglasses or contacts. Um, if they, if the athlete does not pass the vision test, they are eligible to get free glasses on site. 
um, we shipped them to a lab, and then they just, the lab sent it to the glasses to us, and then we shipped it to the individual homes, um, and they get new glasses within two months. There's a really awesome opportunity for our athletes that have a hard time seeing that update glasses. Um, did you uh, have, I think you had something to say about opening eyes. Open eyes, yeah, I did, yeah. So the, the first time I went through it was at the um, 2022 USA Games in Orlando, and then um, again this past summer at all state summer games. And um, what I found really, because um, um, like I, I noticed like both in the past when I used to swim or whether I was playing basketball, um, because I have a hard time seeing a in, in a distance. Um, Going through the opening eyes, I was uh, able to 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 get the um, um, eye exam that not only would help me in my daily life, like being right. able to being right. able to see you now, yeah. but yeah. what I, what I found was um, really um, really encouraging was to be able for the first time to get um, sports goggles uh, with, with a prescription um uh, that i uh because like in the past like like for basketball my glasses would would always fall off when i was playing um but now thanks to the uh to the alliance club uh um, opening eyes uh, i was able to in addition to the regular pair of glasses able to get the sport goggles to be able to better help me in my competition Right, and then when you're wearing glasses or a sport goggles that fit your face, it, you feel more confident on the field, too. You're not feeling like you have to hold your glasses the whole time. And that's really cool about this program, along with getting the free glasses, is they have so many different selections for athletes to choose from. There's not just one style. There's, I want to say, definitely at least 20 different styles of colors, you know, uh, oval, circles, rectangular, uh, frames. Uh, so I think it's really cool that it's not just one glasses that anybody gets, it's a variety. Um, so anyone gets glasses that fit their, their vision needs, but also fits their face um, and their style and their, uh, so they can match, you know, meet the gla- fashion needs. Yeah. Success. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so if, if there's any if, if there's any athletes or uh, that's listening, or if anyone of you that's listening that knows of an athlete that has not, um, uh, t- they can put in opening eyes or really any any of the disciplines that we offer in mm-hmm. Illinois. Uh, 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 um, I'm sure t- uh, Taylor, you agree with me that that we highly recommend that more more of our athletes take part in in these um, yes yeah so we have yeah so currently if if we have it as healthy athletes at an event definitely take the advantage um to come to get screened because we don't have we have not met the opportunity had the opportunity to offer healthy athletes at every single event just yet so when the opportunity comes, definitely take advantage of it, you know, definitely work around your schedule to make it happen because we do our best to work with the um, competition schedule, just like summer games, a three-day event. We're there for two full days almost. Um, So we try to accommodate that. Um, So definitely if you're coming up to a Special Olympics event, definitely take a look at the schedule to see if we have healthy habits, if we have healthy athletes, um, whatever healthy uh, health education or screening event opportunity we have, definitely take advantage of it. It would definitely be worth your while. Awesome, awesome. So in addition to the um, um, Special Olympics Lions Club uh, International Foundation opening eyes, uh, the, 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 there's a few more uh, 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 disciplines that we have. Right? Yeah. Yeah, so we have more than planned. I know I'm trying to get through all these because there's so much to share about all these disciplines. So I'll try to keep it short and sweet. So next one I was going to bring up is a healthy, healthy hearing, which is our audiology discipline. Um, so they, we have audiologists or, or uh, ENT specialists that come on site to perform comprehensive hearing screen, screen, screenings. Um, not only do they do hearing tests, but they also check if there's any fluid buildup. Um, wax inside the ear that might be preventing better hearing for the athlete. 
um, and they provide um, follow-up care um, in local areas that they live in. Um, so they and they also provide education on ways to take care of their hearing health. Um, so a lot of us we wear like earbuds that go straight in the ear, volume all the way up. So they have talk about education on that. Um, and then we have from going from ears to uh, mouth, we have uh, special smiles, dentistry. Uh, we they, we they check for their overall health, teeth, teeth health. Um, if they're experiencing any pain or discomfort, um, and they provide education on proper brushing and flossing technique. And um, they also talk about like how taking care of your oral health affects your whole body. Um, I don't have any, um, I can't remember any information right now, but it, it's a really cool visualization they have at on site at this poster of how like it can affect your hygiene, it can affect your organs. Um, and all that kind of thing. So you learn a lot of these special smile events, and every athlete walks away with a goodie bag with a good with yeah. floss, with floss um, toothbrush, and toothpaste. For the, um, the, uh, the the special smiles, I want to briefly um, share my experience when I went through it. They 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 had I think it was, um, and um, it was more at the USA Games. <laughs> At the um, that I went through it, but they had a um, 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 dinosaur that they like showed a um, yeah. dinosaur. Yeah, um, they have like a little yeah, do a quick demonstration because a lot of us uh, we learn by look visually. Um, yeah. So watching a good demonstration of proper brushing, you're supposed to do circles along the your front row and yeah. on the bottom row. Um, yeah, so it's great. It, they do a great job at educating yeah. everybody, um, maybe caregivers. Not yeah. only athletes are learning from this, but caregivers, coaches, families are. Um, yeah. I learned so much from them over every discipline that we've offered so far. Yeah, so, absolutely. And, and then one last thing about the special smilers. I know at the USA Games, we they um, after going through that discipline, uh, they, they gave us a uh, – um, uh, a electric um, toothbrush that ha ha where you can download a uh, uh, app on your phone that they can walk you through how, like not only how to use the electric to uh, toothbrush but the the app has like a a picture of your um, uh, uh, mouth so you know exactly where. Like and, and and how to to properly um, uh, uh, brush. That is so cool. I had not heard of that. Yeah, I was look up and realized that we've gotten to the point where we have an app for two brushes now. How cool is that? But I love yeah. that resource though. That this app could probably give you a better instruction on how to brush your teeth because. You may come to summer games, get a quick demonstration, do it for a couple of days, but sometimes we get back to our bad our bad habits of brushing our teeth. We kind of forget. This app could be a constant reminder, and then eventually it becomes your daily routine. I love that. Um, I love that. I'm gonna have to look that up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'll, I'll um after we're done recording, I'll uh I'll send you an email, Taylor, with, with that with what that um app is because i've got it in my other <laughs> not okay. not in the studio here but uh yeah. um, no rush, but please do when you have a chance i would love to look into that for sure yeah. um so that special smiles and then we have health promotion which is prevention and nutrition um it's really um healthy habits um uh, but with expertise on site to kind of give you a full um uh, education on these various topics it could be um dangers of tobacco, sun safety, nutrition, hydration, um, and they also do screenings on bone density, blood pressure, body uh, mass index, or BMI. Um, and the be purpose behind health, health, health promotion is to encourage our athletes to incorporate healthier behaviors and improve um, advocacy to be a better athlete, be a better person, take care of their well-being, overall well-being. Um, so this is something that I would love to offer more throughout the state of Illinois. Uh, 
but we'll get there. Um, and then we have Strong Minds, which is emotional health, um, which is something that is so important to focus on for all of us. Um, so what uh, Strong Minds really is, there are stations that provide examples of active strategies for maintaining emotional wellness under stress. Uh, we deal with stress every day, whether it's a good stress or bad stress. Uh, good stress might be you got a new job, but, but now you have all this new responsibility, you have to meet people. So that can be stressful, but it's a good thing. But this bad stress, um, which could be, you know, someone lost their job and then now they have time to figure out what the next steps are. Um, so those are, so daily stress that we deal with. Um, so we provide stations that help us cope through stressful situations that we deal with daily. So some of the strong minds that look, some of the things that Strong Minds focuses on are expressing positive messaging, thoughts, connecting with others, especially surrounding yourself with a positive um, friendship, uh, connect with positive people, um, staying active by practicing meditation, yoga, um, practicing stretch um, flexibility, stretch moves, um, deep breathing exercises, and that comes a long way, just kind of resetting your tone and your mindset, um, really any way that releases stress in a positive way. Um, do you, Gina, do you have any way that, that you do with, when you're dealing with good stress or bad stress? Yeah, I, I was just making a, a, a couple of notes um, to, <laughs> to, to, um, to, to uh, of full uh, strong minds. Uh, a couple of things. One is, um, uh, which I, I took away from the health muscle new training, the DIY stress ball. Um, so that's one thing. And then um, uh, the other thing that I've even um, before going through the health lesson training is writing down my um, thoughts. Uh, yeah. Um, writing down the thoughts that I, um, yeah. So like journaling is something that Journal helps you. That's that's really good, no, it's a good way to capture your thoughts um, and jot down how you're feeling. And that you, sometimes it's kind of cool to go back to, okay, this is how I'm feeling. This is how I overcame that, those thoughts. And this is how I'm doing now. It's kind of a good way to recover yeah. your stress, uh, but a good way to vent um, without having to vent to somebody. You just want to vent to your journal. Um, and that's a, that's a great way. Um, I do that as well. Uh, one of my ways that I deal with stress is going outside, just getting some sun. Um, sometimes that helps me um, take a little walk. Sometimes just stepping away from my phone and the computer, playing with my dog. Those are, those are my ways of doing stuff. Yeah. dealing with stress. We all have different ways. Um, so Strong Mind just helps um, bring awareness of how can we deal with stress, whether it's good or bad, in a positive way uh, without hurting others or hurting ourselves, anything like that? Yeah. I also like to um, um, take walks as well to, 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 to let stress out. Um, so that's another thing. And then one last thing I wanted to add is um, the – uh, um, strong minds when I was a Southern Shriver Global Messenger in Berlin at the World Games, that was something that I wish I knew. Um, it wasn't until um, my the very last day, like the last day, right before I got in the uh, taxi cab to go back to the airport, one of um, one of the other staff had had, had gave me a uh, strong minds bag of of uh, of of different um, of strong minds um, activities, uh, but that was the very last day going back to the, the airport. So I wish I would have had that uh, during during my time. But um, one last thing that I'll mention is for those of you that are listening to this health um, health series uh, season two, the end of this month of September, uh, we will have um, um, hopefully. One of the new Southern Shriver Global, Global Messengers from Special Olympics Ireland, um, who I found out uh, that she, her 
one of her projects or her platforms as a global messenger is focused on strong minds. Because a lot of times when you are an athlete spokesperson, uh, there's whether it's in, in, in particular at the global level, but we can re- relate it to the local level as well, that there are so many opportunities as athlete leaders or health messengers that we're asked to do. And so, uh, yeah, so it'll be exciting to talk to uh, to Ho at the end of the, this month of September. Um, that's on, gonna be a, uh, that's gonna be a really cool episode. Uh, there will be a lot to gain from that episode. So I'll definitely look forward to that one. Um, take a listen to what they have to say. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, because Strong Minds is such a, it's such, it's such a big, um, topic, you know, talk about emotional health, you know, there's all sorts of different stressors. So it's really important for everybody to understand what their stressors are. And that's the purpose of Strong Minds to help us understand what our stressors are and what helps relieve those our feelings of stress. Um, so very, yeah, so that's Strong Minds. Um, and yeah, you'll have the opportunity to dive more into that. So that'd be really cool. Um, just two more disciplines to cover. So we have fun fitness, which is physical therapy. Uh, we have physical therapists so students come out and they perform uh, flexibility, strength, balance, and aerobic fitness exams um, to essentially just test the uh, athlete's range of motion, their balance, um, their agility, um, and they provide education and exercise recommendations based on their performance throughout the exam. Um, mm-hmm. I know, Daniel, you did, you went through a pump fitness at Summer Game. Can you share a little bit about your experience? Yeah, absolutely. What I loved about going through the fun fitness, which I've, um, I've gone through it um, a, a couple of times, but both, um, at summer games at the local level, and then also at the USA games a- as well. And what I loved about that experience was uh, the how the physical therapists help help you uh, 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 to uh, know how, like how to properly um, um, be able to balance and to count your steps, and then then the the, the uh, also the I'm stretching to like see like how how um, far that you can stretch because um, a lot a lot of those uh, um, acti- um I'm not <laughs> my sister is a physical therapist so I, I don't know the the correct words to a lot of uh, terminology that comes with it um yeah so essentially yeah they test your range of motion um your balance. Um, and just kind of see if there are any uh, underlying issues that are going with your joints or your muscles. Um, and so it's a really great benefit for all the athletes because, you know, you're running, you're jumping, you're doing all of these different movements on the competition field. And um, sometimes these movements affect our body more than they should. And some of us may not practice stretching before and after a workout. So it does take a toll on our bodies. So that's where, uh, you know, a fun fitness comes in and just helps us identify, hey, you know, this might be why you're leaning towards this way more than leaning you know, towards your right than your left more. Um, these are some exercises you can do to help, you know, balance that out. Um, so definitely, I'm glad you had a good experience with that. It's, um, I think, um, a lot of people undervalue fun fitness. I think um, it needs, it's, it's, I appreciate fun fitness coming out to our events and really helping our athletes um, that do competition competition all year round. So, yeah, thanks for sharing your experience with fun yeah, fitness. Um, and then we have, lastly, uh, 50 podiatry. Um, and essentially what they do, we have book care providers um, that come out and do perform screenings for athletes um, their foot and ankle health, um, check their footwear fit, if their shoes fit properly, um, and kind of see the condition of their foot health, really. Um, because a lot of times, I know I'm guilty of this too, we, a lot of times we wear shoes for style and not necessarily what is right for our feet. Um, so these, um, 
healthcare providers will come out just kind of do advance after they do advance, kind of share what their findings are. These are the shoes that recommend it, I re recommend for you just based on if you're flat footed or you have really high arches. Um, so they kind of do a full examination and kind of provide what shoes are right, what socks should, should they, what socks should you be wearing. Um, some benefit from tighter socks, some benefit from longer socks. Um, so that's podiatry or fit fit yeah. Um I I wanted to briefly uh, kind of share my experience with Fit Feet because I oh, um, the, the 2019 Special Olympics World Games in Abu Dhabi, um, I um, I went through it um, uh, over there, and one of the global ambassadors, um, Bob uh, um, Bob um, um, Beeman, who is a Olympic athlete, um, he he has a um, a brand of um, a morning shoe, and he he gave out um, uh, the the shoe. I I, I still have it um, just outside of the studio here. Um, it, it has uh, it, it, there's no shoelaces. There's like a buckle that's on the side of the shoe, so it's made it's made for uh, um, and in. And what I enjoy, in, really found valuable about going through the fit feet is just like what you said, um, I, they were able to measure my feet. And then um, even um, after that experience, um, I was able to, um, so like, like, like for work, um, I, I, by going through that, you're able to be able to kind of know what the proper shoe that, that, that right. need, whether it's for, Right. There's so many. There's so many shoe brands out there. There's New Balance. There's Asics. There's Nike. There's Adidas, and a lot of these shoes are great shoes. But sometimes if they're not perfect for our feet, they don't get the right balance, the right support. Um, so that's why that's why we have specialists come out to tell us, hey, this is the shoe you need. Um, so it's definitely a great opportunity, and that's so cool. I'm really glad you got to share your experience uh, because it, it's really if, if you get a lot of, out of it and you learn a lot about well wow, i'm not wearing the right shoe or i am wearing the right shoe so yeah awesome do they awesome. tell you what shoe brand fits best or is best for you or do they, they give you I, like a, a couple options no i don't recall them telling me a particular shoe brand it was more um so in at the abu dhabi world games it was more there was um the, the 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 brand of shoe that Batty gave us that, that was branded full those world games like they had the, this Olympic a- athlete he um he 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 branded shoes just for Special Olympics and it was um so like that that one particular brand was I think it was Pulse Footwear I believe okay um and 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 yeah so that was the only type of that. That's really yeah. cool because, like, even like if you have, if for example, we were to partner with one shoe brand, a lot of times that brand offers so many different variety of different shoes. So typically, a lot of them do offer um, shoes that fit well for people that have flat feet and then those that have high arches. So that's really cool that a a brand uh, shoe brand was able to come out and provide that opportunity for you guys. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, um, that wraps up those eight disciplines, but I'm sure a a lot of our listeners want to know now after hearing about all these disciplines, these eight disciplines, but we only offer, um, a few of them in Illinois, which, um, the, um, if they go to the webpage, uh, soil.org slash healthy athletes, um, they, they can see which ones that we offer in Illinois, but, um, you, maybe we can briefly talk about what what the benefit for us because we uh, ho- hopefully Alyssa has kind of got a first hand pers- perspective for myself of 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 how it it benefits the athletes. But maybe we could share a little bit more from across Illinois and the nation of 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 why all athletes should go through um the 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 world's largest health program for those of us with intellectual 
Yeah, yeah. We hope to one day offer all to the plants in Illinois. We are working towards that goal, and we, we will achieve it one day. Um, but, it, um, yeah, so the reason why we offer, and a lot of people, people ask me, you offer this for free? Yes, yeah, for free. Um, the reason why, because, unfortunately, for so many athletes, uh, especially athletes from Illinois, across the state, um, across the nation, the world, do not have many of them do not have the same or better health care than others. Um, there are so many reasons for these barriers, why they don't have the proper health care they, they should have. Um, and this is because of insurance, uh, insurance limitation, um, transportation, uh, lack of resources, especially for those that live in the rural areas for urban, urban um, fear of doctors made it the athlete does not have a good experience going to a doctor and now they are refusing to go anymore um and also to give everyone kind of perspective on why equal health care or why a healthy athlete program is so important is because of these stats um this was a uh, research done by the special olympics a couple years ago for every 10 athletes on a special Olympics team, two have never had an eye exam, four need new prescription for glasses, two have potential hearing loss, four of them uh, have untreated untreated tooth decay, and two of them are in need for dental care, and likely six are of the athletes are overweight and at risk for chronic health conditions. So this is why we really push for our healthy athletes, and we always looking for to partner with local medical providers to help make these happen for our athletes. Um, so, and then the healthy athletes is not just for our athletes, but it's also for our healthcare professionals to give them experience um, and increase knowledge of best practices in caring and communicating with people of intellectual disabilities. Um, so not only are our athletes getting free healthcare that they deserve, uh, healthcare providers are getting the experience and building the confidence and building connections with our athletes. Um, so in my book, as a win-win. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And I wanted to kind of boldly clarify the, the benefit for us athletes. An example that happened at, I believe it was the Abu Dhabi World Games. It might have also happened at the Berlin World Games, but I know definitely at the at the Abu Dhabi World Games, um, there was an. I believe there was it was a team from. I'm blanking on the country. It was either Africa or it, it was it was some country that that um, doesn't have a lot of the health services that that we have in the U.S. But they there was a, a team. And I'm blanking on what sport that they were competing in, but they, uh, they, they weren't able to heal their uh, their, their coaches or the or, or the um, officials in the competition. And when they went to the World Games, uh, they 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 went through the healthy athletes, in particular, they went through the healthy healing, and they were able to get free healing aids. Um, for the first time, they were able to heal. Uh, yeah, I don't know, Taylor, if you heard of that that story that happened a few years ago, but uh, that like that that's an example um, on the global level. But that it also you can relate that to the the local level as well. That that's an example of the the need of why you know so many of, of us athletes need. The necessity of because, um, like, right. like what we're here in, in just a little bit, like the clinical directors and these health professionals are trained of how to talk and interact with us, and so that's 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 the uniqueness that health yeah. Africa. Yeah. They have. That's a prime example of why we do what we do, why we have healthy athletes and why we push for more to host more throughout the day. So more of our athletes have the op more opportunity to get through all the health disciplines that we offer. Um, yeah, and it's a great opportunity for our all health professionals and students that are looking to become better professionals 
um, this is a great opportunity for them to to learn how to um, work with uh, people with intellectual disabilities. Um, even outside of that, we all have different communication needs and different ways of absorbing information. This, you know, we all need, and we can all benefit from healthy athletes, whether awesome. you're an athlete or you're a healthcare provider. Absolutely. And so, speaking of that, of the healthcare providers, we, um, I know you have, you have said this a few, a few times during this episode, but. Uh, I want to remind our listeners that we 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 always looking for healthcare volunteers and students to help all athletes. So if you're listening to this, if you're listening to Taylor and me right right now, uh, please uh, take a look at our resources uh, soil.org/slash/healthy-athletes and. Uh, and uh, the link will be in the description below uh, as well. And contact uh, Taylor if you're in Illinois and interested in volunteering. Uh, and speaking of that, if um, we've got um, doing uh, after I went through the healthy athletes uh, 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 screenings at our summer games, um, we had an opportunity to sit down with one of our healthy healing clinical directors, right? Um, uh, 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 I'm Taylor to hear your whole perspective of. Yeah. Yeah. You were able to talk to Jen Ragazu, uh, who works um, in, outside of Bloomington and she's been a, a clinical director, a healthy head healthy hearing clinical director for, I want to say, three or four years now, and she comes to our summer things every year, um, and just hearing what she has to say gives a lot of perspective of why she returns every year, uh, her passion for being a volunteer, and um, it's a great, it's a, it's a good, uh, it's a good chat you guys had. It, yeah, absolutely. So, um, um, folks, we will we're, we're going to come back to wrap up this episode, but uh, we we hope that you all will enjoy this. Uh, this was recorded uh, on location from the 2020 full Special Olympics of Illinois State Summer Games in Bloomington, Nomo, uh, Illinois, with our Healthy Healing Clinical Director Jen right here on specialchronicles.com. You're listening to the uh, Special Chronicles podcast and all health mini series 2.0. I'm here at uh, Special Olympics Illinois Summer Games uh, at Healthy Athletes and uh, here with one of our clinical directors, um, Jen. You want to uh, introduce yep. yourself? Absolutely. My name is Jennifer Ragusa. I am an audiologist at Illinois State University and I've been a clinical director for healthy hearing uh, for the last several years, I think since 2018. So, um, Awesome. Yes. <laughs> so quite a while. Can, can you while. tell us, um, for, uh, I'm sure some of our listeners might know what, what is uh, uh, healthy hearing one of the uh, disciplines in uh, uh, that um, athletes go through uh, in healthy athletes, but can you show from your perspective what is health, uh, healthy hearing um, discipline? Absolutely, I'd be happy to. So healthy hearing is, first of all, of course, checking for it, do, can our athletes hear appropriately, but we also look in their ears to screen for um, like, things in their ear canal, like ear wax or other stuff that shouldn't be there. We also can screen the for ear infections in our athletes. And then of course, testing whether or not they are able to hear appropriately and then get them referred to the appropriate personnel in their area. Cause we uh, understand not everyone's yeah. around here. Uh, yeah. Uh, so this, so, so this year, uh, you, do you know about how many um, uh, how many screenings have taken place? I I I just went through um, the um, screenings and in, in, in past at the after hearing. Congratulations! <laughs> so can you do, 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 
I, do you know about I I I know today's uh, I'm Saturday, so we still have more screenings. Right. But do you know about how many? My guess is around 150. I'm um, usually around 150 to 200 mark for most years that we're here. Awesome, and uh, sure, I'm, I'm sure uh, um, most people, uh, uh, most of the athletes are interacting with the volunteers. And but can you share from your perspective as a clinical director, um, how did you get started, and what 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 is it like being a, a clinical director for Hop Healing? Absolutely. So I started by just reaching out to headquarters saying this is something that I want to be a part of, that I think it's a very important thing. I'd love to be able to volunteer my time and help out. What can I do? And I got an email very back pretty quickly saying that, hey, you should be a clinical director. We will send you to training. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm like, okay. I kind of jumped in both feet first. Um, they sent me to a train the trainer event in Austin, Texas. And that is where I learned how to be a clinical director. And I joined up with another clinical director that was already here at the summer games. And she's kind of stepped down and I'm then the person who's been mostly taking the reins for the last couple of years. Awesome. And you've, um, and when, when we were walking over here to the space where we'll <laughs> yeah. record in, <laughs> um, yeah. it looks like we're underground. Uh, Kind of, are. Kind of, kind of. <laughs> um, you you were saying that you've um, you've been the uh, uh, clinical director for a few a mm -hmm. few years. Why do you return to all events to to help the athletes to some games uh, each each year? Um, I honestly have fallen in love with the Special Olympics organization. I love being able to interact with the athletes. Um, it's always such a joyful event and I'm so glad to be able to share my passion and my discipline with Special Olympics um, and with the athletes and being able to help and help guide toward better management and so that way our athletes can have the best health care possible and part of that of course is hearing so if you cannot hear what your doctor or coach or fellow athlete is saying you're not going to be able to perform your best yeah. awesome um speaking of that um two final questions to sure. wrap up um first kind of jumping off of what you said and talking about the um, benefits. Um, I was at the 2019 World Games in Abu Dhabi, and I, I remember hearing a, a story of, and I, I forgot what team they're from, but there, there was a team that went that went through healthy hearing. Uh, they they didn't have hearing aids, and then when they went through through healthy hearing, they they were able to receive hearing aids for the first time, and then were able to hear the coaches, and mm -hmm. so. That 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 was at the 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 international level, um, but at, at the local level, is there a, a, a story that that you have seen? Whether it was it, it was this year or sure. from your previous time at Health Athletes? Um, there are two that stand out to me. Um, one is an athlete who came who when she came through we said you know it looks like there's a lot of wax build up in your ears i don't i really think you need to get that taken out and they came back the next year and shared that they did go to a professional to have their wax removed and they found a big infection behind the wax and i didn't they did not know it was there and they said if it had gotten much worse they would need to do surgery on that athlete to try to remove all of the infection so because they came through healthy hearing they didn't need surgery um and of course, I have a couple different stories of people who didn't know they had a hearing loss, come through healthy hearing, realize, oh, I probably should get my hearing tested and have then gotten hearing aids. And then because they came through healthy hearing, they were able to then go through that process and, yeah, be able to awesome. join in in the world that in that much more. Awesome. Yeah. So I, I'm sure many of us are grateful that, that we have this program where um, a after we'll compete and then we'll, we'll able to get the, 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 the inclusive health support. Uh, what are the benefits for the, and kind of 
speaking to, uh, hopefully we'll have some um, listeners, um, old viewers, because yep. I guess people now listen or watch. Yeah. Um, um, I prefer audio podcasts, but some of our viewers Same. will watch <laughs> will watch watch videos. Um, what what are the benefits for the clinical directors for students? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure we, yes. we, we've had um, students that have been volunteering and athletes for for them to be involved in healthy athletes and promoting our inclusive health um, movement. Absolutely, I'm able to share with my students um, how to provide inclusive health care for everybody. And that starts at Healthy Hearing. Um, most of all the students that we have here are actually part of the Illinois State University Student Academy of Audiology. Um, and they actually get volunteer hours for participating. We frequently have um, volunteers from other universities within Illinois. I also have a lot of um, volunteers from other audiologists in the area. So then my students then get to interact with those audiologists. And then they know because those audiologists are here and a part of this, that they also are part of inclusive healthcare and will treat patients appropriately and rightfully so. Um, so it's benefit to the students, both from a volunteer hours standpoint, as well as being able to experience um, inclusive healthcare. Awesome. Awesome. And to we have up our time together. Um, I was since I came back from the 2019 World Games and Abu Dhabi. Uh, the, we, of course, want our listeners to consume the content, but um, even more than that, um, take t take something away and 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 bring um, uh, action mm -hmm. to the community. Whether it's uh, um, uh, sharing with someone who's a clinical director or a student to get involved in um, our healthy athletes, get involved in, in healthy healing. Uh, what does, in, 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 I mean, I'm gonna rephrase this uh, a little bit to kind of put a inclusive health spin to it, but what, what does inclusive health mean to you? Mm -hmm. To me, inclusive health means being able to treat every athlete or patient in a way that they can receive their best health care and do their best in whatever method I need to be able to do that um, and, and make sure that I treat the entirety of a person and not just my little window mm -hmm. into a person and their life. Awesome. Well, that's a perfect way to wrap up our time together. I guess it's been um, on Jen. Uh, right. I guess it's in uh, uh, um, to director from, from Healthy Healing. Uh, thank you again, um, uh, John, for um, um, taking the time to um, talk and and, and um, um, educate all of listeners about Healthy Healing. Thank you very much for having me, Daniel. I'm happy to promote my profession and Healthy Hearing as much as I can. Thank you. So for those of, of you listening, uh, you can uh, follow our, uh, our inclusive uh, health mini series 2.0 on specialchronicles.com slash health, uh, as well as to find uh, uh, um, resources, um, we've got resources for our healthy athletes and, and, and how you can get uh, involved. So Don, thank, thanks for listening. And until then, uh, choose to include. Love that, Daniel. Thank you. Thank you. And so, and we hope that was uh, Jen. Uh, there was a uh, a uh, empowering uh, interview with her. Um, um, Taylor, I know we, we've got a few minutes uh, left uh, in this uh, extra long uh, uh, healthy athlete episode. But did you have any comments from hearing from from Jen? Uh, she. She she also answered what does inclusive health mean to her at the end of the episode. So I'm I'm gonna hold off. Um, all of you listening will have to um, wait to next week to hear my answer to the question. But Taylor, did did you have any comments from hearing from Jen? It was just so great to hear her perspective and how she said it's just a joy to be around the athletes and 
share her passion uh, with us, which is so great to hear. It's so great to have these connections with, you know, such dedicated volunteers um, and hearing her answer for inclusive health just aligns with what with Special Olympics um, promotes. Um, we talk about, you know, just making sure that everybody has equal access to all areas of health so that way they can be the best on and off the playing field. Um, so it's just really cool to hear her perspective and hopefully a lot of your viewers get gain this thing from her. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and for the, um, those of you that are uh, uh, um, listening, we we hope that you have enjoyed this episode. If you have enjoyed this episode, please, please, please go on over to um, Apple Podcasts and leave a, uh, uh, a positive um, uh, review and five star um, five star uh, waiting uh, and and share this episode with um, you can text it to your friend you can share this episode on your social media uh, please please share this episode and this um, health series inclusive health series season two uh, if you um all if you go on over to specialchronicles.com slash health we have this um, season two. Um, we have all um, all of these episodes from Becoming a Health Messenger um, all the way through these weekly episodes in September. And then we have uh, season one, which was recorded during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, we've got um, a bunch of um, season one where he focused on um, fitness at um fitness at home and uh, and and some fitness challenges at home, which, Maybe we'll we'll have to um, Taylor after we um, do these five episodes. Maybe we'll we'll, we'll have to talk about maybe um, bringing back um, a uh, uh, a move uh, a move challenge um, and do it and do an, an episode on this series about a movement challenge. Uh, maybe we can talk about that. I would love to. Yeah, once we roll into the cooler days and winter, we're all going to have to get creative and staying active while we indoor. So I'm all for it. Yeah. So maybe we 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 can. Uh, so for those of you listening, if if you guys would like us to um, do a, a movement challenge, um, or have any feedback, specialchronicles.com slash contact, uh, and then uh, the healthy athletes page. Um, we have. Um, on if you go to specialchronicles.com slash health, underneath these episodes, we have included um uh, uh the links to healthy athletes, to links to the, the fit five, all of the health resources we we have included. There's also if you scroll down on that page, there's some cooking videos and um some um hydration guides and, and fitness guides um on all on the on this um, podcast page uh so yeah so thank you again taylor for coming up um uh the next episode uh in this series we're going to be covering healthy habits yeah all the things with healthy habits yeah where we talk about all the topics and dive a little deeper into fit five nutrition hydration physical activity sun and safety tobacco avoidance all the good stuff Awesome. And so um, you guys do not want to miss uh, the uh, next episode, the next episode of the series uh, of this inclusive health series, season two, as well as inclusive advocacy and uh, in a, an episode all about strong minds is coming up. So you guys do not want to miss. So please um, stay following right here. And uh, until then, uh, we remember we'll choose to include and we'll talk to you next week right here on the Special Chronicles podcast. Take care. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Special Chronicles podcast. Our podcast was produced by Daniel Smikowski on the Special Chronicles Network. Follow Special Chronicles on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Subscribe, rate, and review Special Chronicles on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Our website, specialchronicles.com, where you can stream our archives of over 500 episodes for absolutely for free. Also, there's a list of our favorites, original series, award-winning columns, and blogs. And sign up for our newsletter to receive exclusive bonus content delivered to your inbox. Again, specialchronicles.com. 
Special Chronicles is hosted by Podbean Podcast Hosting. Our live streams are powered by StreamYout. Thanks, as always, to our business manager, Adam Smukowski, who always in- encourages us to never give up. I'm Daniel Smukowski. Back next week with more stories. Special Chronicles. Giving respect and a voice to people with special needs.